What's up guys? Hopefully you're watching this video because you are planning a long distance bike tour such as the Transamerica and you're wondering what gear you need to bring. Well, I'm about a week from the finish on the Trans Am, so I figured I'd put up a video showing you guys everything that I brought, as well as maybe a few things that I wish I knew before the trip. Um, you know, some things that I could have done to lighten up my load uh, and things that I could do without. So before I get into the gear, I just want to put out a disclaimer. My stuff is pretty heavy. My bike plus gear when I started was around 115 pounds. Um, since then, I've gotten it down to about 95 pounds. But a lot of people that I see on the road are around 75 to 80 pounds. And I believe I've only seen two other people that are over 100 pounds. But that being said, you know, don't let anybody tell you your setup is too heavy. If you can handle it, then you'll be fine. Um, your body's going to get used to it. And honestly, you're just going to be a stronger cyclist for carrying all that weight. So if you can't afford like the super lightweight tent or, you know, all the lightweight gear, don't worry about it. Um, and trust me, a lot of people are going to tell you that you need to lose all this weight. You know, you need to get rid of this, you need to get rid of that. Take all that with a grain of salt and just, if you think that, you know, it's worth the weight, then bring it. And if it's not, then send it home. But, you know, once once you're about two weeks, three weeks into the trip, you'll know what you can do without and um, start sending stuff home if that's the case. All right, so with all that being said, let's start off with the bike itself. I'll do a review on the Trek 520 here, which I love, by the way. And I'll put that up on my channel eventually, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about the bike itself, but, um, you know, this is a gear video, so I'll just go over the gear real quick. I got two racks um, because I use four panniers. If you're just going to use two panniers, then you just need one rack, save some weight in the front. Um, I put fenders on there. They do great, help keeping your feet dry uh, and your back dry from all the, the spray coming up in the rear. And they also help keep all the components clean from all the mud and grime from the road. Um, I got a Brooks B17 saddle. They are extremely comfortable once you break them in. They're leather and they're a great investment because you're gonna be sitting on there for six plus hours a day. So um, if you're gonna make one upgrade on your bike, it should be the saddle in my opinion. And yeah, I got two water bottle cages on there. And I could put a third down here, but instead I just decided to use this area for a pump. Then up here, I just have the mount for my phone and the mount for the GoPro. As far as tires go, I don't even think this is a question. The Schwalbe Marathon Plus tires are the way to go. Absolutely bulletproof. I put these on in Yellowstone and I haven't had a single flat tire since then. And I'm in Virginia. So definitely, definitely, definitely Schwalbe Marathon Plus. All right, guys, here it is. Everything that I have in my panniers. So like I said, I run four panniers. The yellow ones go in front and they're pretty small compared to these big black ones that go in the back. All right, so let's start with the clothes, which I carry in my front right pannier got two pairs of riding underwear i like wearing these shorts while i'm riding so i just put these on underneath uh sleeveless shirt here i don't really wear it i guess i wear it most when i'm doing laundry you need something to wear while you're washing everything else obviously and um if this thing is soaked like it doesn't dry out overnight then I'll i wear this while i'm riding sometimes a uh, pair of underwear I brought two, I'm wearing one now, and then got this one, and then riding gloves. Three pairs of socks. You could get away with just bringing two, but uh, I can't stand wearing, you know, dirty socks, so I just bring three. And then rain jacket. This thing is, this thing is massive and pretty heavy. If you can afford to get a real lightweight one, you know, some of them roll up to like the size of your fist. That'd be a pretty good investment because this thing takes up a ton of space. So um, that's definitely an area where you could save on weight. And yeah, that's all the clothes I brought besides the shirt I'm wearing, the pants I'm wearing, and the underwear I'm wearing. 
All right, so next, I guess we'll go over the uh, sleep system. This is my air mattress and it is massive. Most people will just go with a pad, like a little pad that folds up real small or one of those little inflatable mattresses that rolls up to, you know, like <laughs> a fifth of the size. But um, I love this thing. It's a double air mattress and it's very, very comfortable. Um, I don't know, I think sleep's really important on a trip like this. And honestly, I might bring this on my next trip too, but you know, if you're really worried about weight, then you can definitely save weight on this. This thing is very heavy. I think it's about three pounds and it takes up a lot of space in the bags. So, you know, depending on how, uh, how you prioritize sleep, you can go with a much smaller pad. Uh, this is the sleeping bag. When I was out west and it was cold, I had a different sleeping bag that was much bigger. Um, I think this is rated for 50 degrees and my other one was rated for 10 degrees. So keep that in mind when you're picking a sleeping bag. If it's gonna be cold where you are, then make sure you get a sleeping bag that is rated for that or get one that like this for the warmer weather and then you can buy liners that just go inside the sleeping bag that'll add a couple of degrees of warmth. Pillow, um, Sea to Summit pillow, really nice, really small, lightweight, and pretty comfortable once you get used to it. And then the tent is back here in the red bag. Um, I ripped my tent bag on the first day, so I had to use this big bag, but the tent packs up, you know, smaller than this, but, uh, you know, since I ripped the bag, I just shove everything in there. There's also a tarp in here. So, um, this bag with everything in it weighs eight pounds. Again, the tent is really somewhere where you can save a ton of weight. I've met people with tents that weigh a little over a pound. Um, but you're going to pay for that. I mean, it's going to be $400, $500 for a good lightweight tent. I just got a real cheap tent on Amazon and it works fine, but like I said, it's heavy. So, so yeah, that's, um, that's the sleep system. All right, for tools, uh, got a multi-tool here, you know, all different size Allen keys. Um, and this has like socket wrenches in it. I, I don't really need this. I probably should send this home but it's not that heavy, so I figure whatever. Um, because I also have these Allen keys and these fit all the bolts on my bike. So uh, make sure you bring Allen keys that fit every single bolt on your bike. Cable cutters, I've snapped a few cables. So these are very, very handy to have. I recommend bringing them with you. Yeah, they're kind of big and heavy, but it's worth it. Tire levers, obviously you need tire levers. You're gonna you're probably going to get a flat. I mean, if you get the marathon pluses, you might not, but you definitely need to be prepared to repair flats, uh, which is why I also have a spare tube. And if you have cheaper tires than those marathon pluses that are prone to flats and maybe bring two tubes, definitely bring a patch kit. So if I, if I pop an inner tube, I can always patch it up and keep using it. Um, Tweezers, just to get anything out, like any sharp glass or anything out of the tire, out of the inner tube that you might not be able to grab with your fingers. Um, spare zip ties, I just, I think I found these somewhere. Um, you know, if one of them snaps that are holding your cables under your bike, it's good to have extras to replace. Electrical tape, and then rags for wiping stuff down. Um, good. Good lube is, is important to have. You gotta lube up that chain. I do mine once a week. I know people that do it every 200 miles, which would be like twice a week, so, or, or even more. So, um, I don't know, once a week has been working fine for me. And I carry all these tools in this bag. This stuff here is all for the GoPro charger for the batteries, um, the carrying case for the SD cards, an external hard drive because I originally brought my laptop so I would back up the SD cards on the hard drive but I sent the laptop home. Um, this is a headlight 
I've, I, I don't think I've ever ridden in the dark past. Um, well, that's not true. I've ridden in the morning a lot in Kansas. So definitely bring a headlight. Um, this one's really bright. So if you're gonna do early morning rides before the sun comes up or you're gonna be out after dusk, then definitely bring a headlight. Um, lighter for the stove here. The igniter doesn't always work on the jet boil, so bring a lighter. And also for fires, campfires, all that stuff. Um, you know, I have asthma, so I have an inhaler. Um, and the GoPro itself that mounts on my handlebars, so it doesn't go in any of the bags. For my cooking setup, I just have a jet boil. Um, this does well for like canned soups and you know, spaghetti in a can, stuff like that. Stuff they can just heat up. Uh, it also does well for like oatmeal, anything where you boil water, uh, ramen noodles, stuff like that. But you can't really cook anything in here. Like you can't, you know, you can't cook meat or eggs or anything like that. So um, if I did this again, I'd probably just get one of those little, like at REI, you can find a little stand that just goes on top of a canister like this. And then you can put a pot or a pan on top, I'd probably go with that next time, um, just to give you more options for what you can eat. But jet boiled as well. Uh, coffee, coffee can, coffee mug. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for the cooking setup. Uh, there's like silverware and stuff like that in here in the jet boil. But, um, you know, I also have food. I, I keep all the food in here. Um, I, I'm not going to show that because, you know, that's so so subjective. It's going to vary. If you're in a place where food is everywhere, then you don't need to bring a lot of food at all. But if you're, you know, going to be out in the middle of nowhere, then you should bring a couple days worth of food. And I, I have this bear bag, bear proof ursac. And that's good to have when you're out west, when there's grizzlies and stuff like that. But uh, I keep I keep meaning to send that home and I keep forgetting. So, um you're going to be in bear country, I'd recommend bringing a bear bag.